Whether it's millennials telling Gen Z they age like spoiled milk, or a 33 year old woman posting a selfie and getting comments calling her old and decrepit, the battle of ages on TikTok is annoying and it needs to stop. In today's video, we'll talk about why aging has become so divisive, the history and connection of age and beauty, and a secret about aging that people don't want you to know about. I hope you enjoy the video. You probably think that this isn't a new thing, that throughout human history, women have been judged for their age and their beauty. Even when I ran a poll about this in my community tab, a lot of people said that it's not a new thing. But even in that poll, millennial women had responses that said that they have never felt this anger and divisiveness over aging before. In fact, I've gotten comments from women who are 23 who've been made fun of and been called ancient by younger women. I feel like there's two separate questions that we're asking here. Is age and beauty a new thing? And secondly, has it become a bigger issue and more toxic than it recently was? To answer that question, I would briefly want to go through the history of aging and beauty. Would you be hot in ancient Greece? And I am not only talking about the ladies, because in ancient Greece, male beauty was just as revered as female beauty. In fact, probably more so. Because symmetry and proportion are of the utmost concern when it comes to beauty in ancient Greece. This even extends to the eyebrows, or should I say eyebrow. Frida Kahlo had this down. The monobrow was very popular in ancient Greece. So grow it in thick there in the middle or paint it in with a little coal. There's a bit of a double standard at work in ancient Greece. The men are revered for their muscles and fitness, while the women are expected to be soft and curvaceous. Did you know that in the medieval period, high foreheads were the ultimate beauty ideal? This woman here would have been considered an absolute beauty. The medieval period considered perfectly oval faces to be the ultimate beauty ideal and to achieve that effect, women needed a hand. Throughout human history, the beauty standard has always changed. What's considered the goal and the pinnacle of beauty has changed from region to region, culture to culture, and time from time. Even in our short lifespans, what was considered beautiful in the 2010s is not considered beautiful now. I specifically remember Britney Spears being criticized for the way that she looks and plenty of women look the way that she looks now and they're considered beautiful. But throughout thousands of years and thousands of cultures, one thing has remained the same throughout most of them. Youth being tied to beauty. Your skin being flawless, silky, and smooth. The people at Style Theory just did a video about this, the history of skincare products and how they're lying to you. In that video, they talked about how ancient Egyptians used to bathe in sour milk to keep their skin as youthful as possible, which is kind of actually really disgusting. But you probably think that we've answered our first question. Youthfulness has always been tied to beauty. But hold on a second. How we define what is youthful and what is not is always changing. Back in ancient cultures, for example, 15 was considered old. Ancient Egyptians are starting to sound like podcast bros, and it's kind of disturbing. You're a hall. So I messaged her. She's like, I'm only 16. I was like, give a f That's a soundbite. I'm only 16. I don't give, give a f that's a soundbite. So I pick up April Baker in my Mazda RX-8. So the answer to the first question is this. While yes, beauty has been tied to aging, what we describe as old or young is always changing. To me, I'm 26, so 25 is young. To you, if you're 18 or so, 30 could be ancient. This is important because it tells us we can change as a society. We can move forward and stop being so ageist against people and tying their beauty directly to their age. Or we can slide back into some weirdoville where everybody is considered old if they're above the age of 18. Before we get to what I think is causing it, I need to stop and say a really annoying thing on the internet is that people think that problems can't get worse or get better. Meaning, as we discussed earlier in human history, women have been judged for aging. That's 100% true. That's a real thing. That doesn't mean that it can't get worse or the hate that women receive for aging can't get worse. To make it personal for a second, as a black man, the racism that I've experienced on Twitter has gotten a lot worse lately. It has always been a problem on the website, surely 100%. But since Elon's taken over, it has objectively gone downhill. For some reason, a lot of internet discourse assumes that things can't get better or worse without the underlying problem still existing. I'm not a woman, so I can't say if this is certain, but from my personal experience, I've noticed since the podcast bro era, the misogyny on internet has been extreme levels of bad. But for some reason in internet discourse and the way that people talk about these issues, they assume that things only can get better and nothing can get worse. It's really weird to me. From personal experience when I was 15 or when I was 16, we were not on websites 
calling 21 year old women old and sending them thousands of comments about how they have wrinkles and how they're not beautiful. You had to use sunscreen. She is lazy and sloppy. As you can see, these comments fell into two categories. I don't look like this. So why do you look like this? And two, you need to wear sunscreen? That just didn't happen. And maybe I'm biased and I'm a man and I didn't see it and it existed. That's 100% true. But when I ask my friends about it, the response that I get is that it's gotten worse. There are two separate questions. Yes, ageism against women have always existed. Secondly, has it gotten worse or has it gotten better? I argue that it's gotten worse. I have three reasons that it's gotten worse. The first one, I've already covered it extensively in my social media video essay about how these social media companies purposely and knowingly understand what they're doing to teenage women by ruining their mental health. I already covered that extensively in that video, but again, here's a screenshot. We have the sources, we know what they're doing. The other two examples I want to talk about, I didn't cover in a social media video essay. The second reason I think is that we are all together. Since there's no places for kids or teenagers to go and be themselves and not be by adults, it's entirely possible that 16 year olds were making fun of women and they were just not doing it to their face. Like if they walked by, they were calling a 25 year old ancient and decrepit. I think I better just keep walking. <laughs> running, better start running, running, running. <laughs> Yes, I just gotta keep but nobody ever heard about it because they weren't in the same spaces. They were in a different third space. And as we became more and more online, like, again, I'm 26, so we still had spaces for kids to go to. But as we started losing those spaces, it got worse and worse. And that kind of fits because somebody in my comment section when I asked this said that when they were 16, they were making fun of older women. They were just not doing it online and publicly. Thinking back while I'm editing this, there was kind of a third space that existed for kids and kind of a third space that existed for adults on social media. Because the algorithms didn't force feed us content back in those days, we sort of hand selected what we wanted to see. So we kind of self sorted into adults and non adults. That's no longer the case and no longer possible on TikTok or even Twitter because everybody stole the TikTok for you page. Because we can't control what we see or not see anymore, we are always at risk of seeing a 14 year old's opinion on the internet, one of the worst things possible. When I was 16, for example, on Twitter, I wasn't following older people. I was mostly following people I went to school with, people I knew and people I grew up with. Now, if you're 16 on the internet, that doesn't really matter anymore. You're not getting your following feed. You're getting whatever is popular on the internet, popular engagement wise. This also goes back to the millennial versus Gen Z thing back in my day. How'd I sound old? We hand selected our thing. So if we didn't want to talk to old people, we wouldn't just follow them. But if you're on TikTok, you have no choice but to see millennial cringe. Therefore, you're more likely to make fun of millennials. Or if you're a millennial and you see a dumb opinion from a kid who would in 2014 or 2012 just be a dumb kid on the internet and not get thousands of views because they were only by other dumb kids, they would have been left alone. The second reason, and it's the reason I'm making this entire video, is that people think that women are immune to toxic ideologies. They aren't. Online discussions usually tend to center around men and how they're influenced by toxic ideologies of podcasters and dating advice gurus. These conversations normally work under the assumption that women are also not affected, or when they are affected, they are only affected by guys who do something towards them, like call them names or something. This just isn't true. Women are listening to those podcasters. Women are getting dating advice from those podcasters. And even if they're not listening to them directly, they're still being influenced by it. Take, for example, a toxic podcaster goes viral saying once women hit the age of 22, they've peaked and everyone beyond that is disgusting. Are you a teenager? No, How old are you? I'm 24. Ah, uh, two of us. Expired. <laughs> Imagine you're a 16 or a 17 year old girl and you see thousands of guys in the comments co-signing it. Maybe you even see your crush in the comments agreeing. This is something that's normally not discussed about because again, a lot of these conversations have this underlying assumption that women are perfect, that women are not like men and they can see through it. Newsflash, women are people. Uh, if you don't believe me, you're just not paying attention. On TikTok recently, there was a trend where women were saying that Candace Owens makes a lot of great points. I knew it. I, I knew it. I knew the second this trend started, y'all were just going to take it a little bit too far because y'all always take it a little bit too far. The same Candace Owens who is currently defending a man who is accused of human who said a lot of questionable things about women. The fact that there is a pre-existing friendship here. What am I talking about? 
I've shared this many times, but my husband and Andrew Tate have been friends for years, and they were friends longer than my career has been. Women are looking up these things. Women are internalizing the messages that society, that podcasters are giving to them. And that's why it was important for me to establish that things can get worse because I, and again, I have very limited experience, didn't notice this type of ageism until the podcast scene came alive. When I was 16 and 15, we were online calling 23-year-old women 40-year-olds. I was humbled so quick tonight. I was on live with my boyfriend and someone was like, how old's your girlfriend? And John jokingly responds, 47. And the girl comments, oh, I thought she was early 30s. I am 23. Right. I'm a married female and used to listen to some of Kevin Samuels. Some of his content and other creators were helpful. However, the more I went down the red pill rabbit hole, the more drained, depressed, and obsessed I've become with this content. Video after video of women hitting the wall, these people are creating more channels. Make sure you keep in mind that this doesn't just stop with ageism, right? There's a big problem on, of women on TikTok saying the most racist stuff ever imaginable, but the framing is always from the place of beauty, just like how ageism is, just like how skincare is. There was one post where it was like, I love being pale. There, these posts are incredibly bad and wrong. I feel like it comes from the same spot. I would love for somebody else who's smarter than me to talk about this. Nobody was doing that. Again, very limited experience. You can tell me if I'm wrong or not in the comments. That wasn't a thing that was happening. 23-year-old women weren't getting thousands of comments calling them old. And the reason I think that it's an internalized message is because even the response to like this age thing on TikTok and everything, hey guys, do I look old? How old do I look? Do I look good? Do I go tell me I don't look old? Please, 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 please. And I'm not making fun of it. Like that's legitimately what it seems like. And it's sad. And we'll get to why that doesn't matter in a little bit. But again, I ask all my friends and they say the same thing, that they've gotten plenty of comments making fun of them and calling them old. This is why you have people who, I'm not trying to be mean, I look old as hell and I'm 26, but you look old, bro. <laughs> you, look, you look old. And it's crazy how everybody on TikTok is eating this up because a newsflash to everyone, how you look at your age is more about how you dress and how you wear your dressing. Like I look old as hell because I dress old as hell. But even if you go back, have you ever seen that viral video of what like school in the 2000s looked like? And all of those people look old as hell because you are coded as old by the clothes that you wear. It's kind of like how some names sound older than others because they're coded as old, like Frank or Margaret or Amber Lynn. Amber Lynn's a hella old name. Last thing before I get to the secret that they don't want you to know about aging is, do you guys remember when Gen Z was like dressing up their parents in their clothes and how everybody was like, oh my God, your mom looks so younger now because she got a style makeover. It just goes to show how much of our age is determined by things outside of our beauty, how we dress, how we act, our lingo. Lastly, in my personal experience, when I was 14, 15, people always used to say that I looked older than I was. They used to say, you look like you're 27, even though my skin looked objectively younger than theirs. The reason I'm bringing this up is because there are different components and I want to prove again that things can change with the times. And it's so important to realize that age is not the sole thing that determines beauty or how you're viewed. Again, in my age, I was still younger than a lot of these people and they saw me as old just because of what my skin looked like. But I'm gonna let you in on a secret. Here's a secret that they don't want you to know. You actually get happier as you age. Your 20s are one of the worst times that you'll be alive. I know people don't wanna hear this, but according to the data that we have, the studies that we have, older people report being happier. Older women are some of the happiest people on the planet. My 20s were a lot of trial and error, a lot of struggle balancing work, school, breaking toxic friendships and relationship, and trying to figure out who I am as an adult. It was a very stressful point of my life. Recently entering my 30s, I am happier because I have a better understanding of who I am and what behavior I tolerate from other people, as well as having more solid ground as far as what I consider right and wrong. I feel more in control in my 30s especially when it comes to relationships. My life feels more serene. It's a lie. The story you heard of your best years being in your 20s is a lie sold to you by cosmetic agencies and makeup companies looking to profit off of your insecurities. All the data we have says it's not true. So laugh, have fun, smile, frown, do whatever you want. Also wear sunscreen just because of the cancer risk. But besides the point, live your life the way that you want to live. Anyway, thank you for watching. Click here for the next one. Have a good day. Peace.